I read the book, um, I very much felt that this was an actor's piece. It's uh, a, a drama that's about character and most of the characters in the story are characters that actors would eat their heart out to play. Howard, think about the mark you make on the world. What's your legacy gonna be? Oh, she's is Sorcerer Tiny Farm in Wales. It's seasonal. Part of the thrill of it is, uh, is the sheer number of, of great characters that there are to bring to life. When they come in, you can do that. People talk about sometimes about, oh, let's make it an ensemble cast. It's maybe because they can't afford to have the lead. In this case, it genuinely is an ensemble cast. <laughs> We've got something like 24 actors that come back again and again. And even the smaller parts have got a full journey. Come on, come on. You want the marshmallow? Fetch the marshmallow. <laughs> Mm. I'm drowning. You're a drowning pirate and I'm a horny mermaid. It was really important for me that this was an amusing piece, as well as tragic and moving, hopefully. So the choice of actor then becomes quite slim because you, you want people who you know can do comedy. And so that was one of the, my starting points. We've been very fortunate to have sort of the creme de la creme of British acting coming together to create this ensemble. Michael Gambon. Carnage. Julia McKenzie, Rufus Jones and Keely Hawes. Fabulous. Uh, if I'm going to be ambushed, I'd prefer to be sober. If I was going to ambush you, I'd just do it. I wouldn't go to all the pain in the ass trouble of cooking. We thought that the biggest challenge was, of course, going to be the kids. And we really lucked out. I mean, we found, you know, our crystal, Abigail, pretty early on, I think on day two. It was literally the first ever audition that Abigail had done. She did the most extraordinary audition I've ever encountered. It was just fantastic. I had to get back in touch and say, well, either either she's sort of um, from Pagford or she's at RADA, because this, this acting was incredible. It was like our crystal. It was perfect. Your husband's a dickhead. I feel right sorry for you, Miss Wall, I do, right, because you married a proper knob. It was integral to the storytelling that we get somebody who felt authentic uh, and who could move you, which she does superbly. So who's that lad, then? That's my boyfriend. Is she nice to you? Yeah. Says I'm authentic. She's only 16 and she's kind of caught up in this mess. Um, all these adults, and she's still a child. She's quite vulnerable. Um, so it was that side of it that kind of drew me to her. I'll tell you what she did say. You be careful of that girl. She's vulnerable. She strikes up a relationship with Fats, and she had a strong relationship with Barry before he dies. He was kind of beginning to show her some sort of path and she had a bit of hope for the future, and then when he um, dies, she's left alone again. So you, uh, you aren't going to school? Now and then I pop in, grace him with my presents. Lucky bastards. Barry Fairbrother, uh, who, who is almost the, the one character who dis displays goodwill to all men and compassion, is the one character that dies early on, and it's his death that sparks off the story. I guess he's the only crusading good heart. He's the one that is driven to unite, I guess, and also to suggest that the emphasis should fall upon those privileged enough to, to have an easy life, um, to work a bit harder to make the lives of those less fortunate themselves easier. We are the guardians of something unique. We are the custodians and the stewards of a shining principle. We do not turn our backs and look away from people in need. Each community needs those leaders that bridge different aspects of them. And you know, you, know, you look at the, you know, some of the, the great leaders who, at times of uh, conflict and schism, have actually said, "Hang on, let's um, let's think about our our shared humanity." Um, and I'm not saying that Barry Fairbrother is Nelson Mandela, uh, but if you want to draw that conclusion. Who am I to refuse? Who's that? Your wingman? Yeah. 
That can't shake him. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> He's not very nice, cunning. Uh, wants to do very well. Not nice to people who aren't like him. He must see himself as above everyone else, must he, the way he talks. So he doesn't even think about it, does he? He knows he's, he's on the couch, he's running the place. And so he uh, just turns out to be a nasty. I mean, look at the state of this place. <laughs> You're going to have to do something about it, you know. Come on, keep up. I'm playing Shirley Mollison, who is probably the mother-in-law from hell. And uh, she's um, one of the village leading lights. Well, she thinks she is the village leading light. She's both hilarious and also scarily familiar as a sort of mother-in-law from hell. Maybe you should go back to the doctors. You'd prefer that, wouldn't you? Me slurring my words and none doubt. Only trying to help, dear. <laughs> yeah, that's good. She hates me. Just pure hate. I feel pretty much the same way about her. Teen's a bit selfish. That anyone would have the nerve to say some of the things that Shirley says. You do have a gift for sabotage, as uh, witnessed by that disastrous dinner party, which, by the way, I, I, I've decided to forgive you for. Such good fun to play, because I could not feel more differently myself towards Julia McKenzie. The pair of us, we laugh so much, we have to get that out of our systems. I am totally in love with her and I would like to adopt her. <laughs> Mum and Dad go mad. They're not going to know, are they, because they're with the girls? Always go too far. I don't think I'll go far enough. Drink any. She is married to Miles, and they're not in a great place when we meet them. Their, their marriage is in a very bad way, um, and that's really down to his relationship with his mother. At one point, his wife, Samantha, says, You're disappearing. <laughs> That's ridiculous. And that's true. He's, he's hiding his light under a bushel and he's just staring into the middle distance and letting life pass him by and letting his parents dominate him. He is a mummy's boy, but it, it's gone too far. <laughs> and now they're using him and pushing him forward uh, in this bloody election. And it's taken over everybody's lives in the village. Now you should stand. I mean, man of your status. What? <laughs> My son, a Mullison. I'm not the man for the job. But uh, I, I'm forced to, to, to stand for election, effectively. I'm a solicitor. People trust me with their wills. Just get rid of it, please. He's a good man. He's a nice man. And his heart's in the right place. But he's, uh, he's gone down the wrong path in life. Now the tables are turned round. We're taking it all crown. Jewels and everything. You'll never be king, because we are the kingdom. You've taken our income, held it for ransom. Up on your mansion. Nothing was mentioned, we suffered the sentence Another day, another detention It's unrelenting, it's incredible I wanted to discover some new people People who, that hadn't necessarily had lead parts before I'd make them quite sharp little I love it seeing someone I've never seen before And suddenly that is the character, you know So we've done that in a lot of cases here To mix the likes of Michael Gambon and Julian McKenzie with some newcomers, and particularly with the younger actors. Oh, there you are, young lady. Sit yourself down. <laughs> Best handwriting now. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. She's not really in her comfort zone. She's kind of like a flamingo in a flock of pigeons. She just feels a bit like the odd one out. I don't think she's made any real friends there until she comes across Arf and um, they actually get on really well. My dad, right, he reckoned himself a right player. Waste man. Is that why you moved? No. Change of scene. Arf is a shy and quiet character, and he has really bad anxiety, mostly due and down to the fact of this really vicious facial acne, which does prevent him from being a confident person because he's deeply in love with this girl called Gaia, but this is holding him back. His dad abuses him in a mental sort of way. He calls him pizza face. He just makes him basically feel so down, which doesn't help with Arf's confidence. It's all sex and death. I mean, that's all there is. And music. Yeah. Fats is a very interesting character. He's quite clever and he's quite confident and works off his impulse. Doesn't, you know, he kind of thinks about his actions later if he thinks about them at all. Remember to smile. Hey, my father, ladies and gents. 
Remember that when you make your mark. By their children shall you know them. See ya. And cat. Very good. His contact is mostly with Arf and, and Crystal. He says, I'm going to shag you. Who he begins a relationship with, sort of thing. Good luck. For the what, Stuart? The job, Gaia. The job. Nice shirt, by the way. You look like a right tit. You see a softer side to all the characters. Even Fats, you see a softer side. You know, he like comes back with his like tail between his legs and like, can you be my friend again? <laughs> like, so you see that kind of vulnerability to Fats. Wanted to uh, say sorry, bang out of order, you know. It's a bit proper man stuff, isn't it? <laughs> Hug it out. It's been great being in the older actors company and who are all fantastic. It's good to sometimes just get to get to see how they work and what their process is and you know, for us because we are still learning, still pretty new. Youngsters frighten me a bit to be honest. <laughs> but they're just charming and, and very easy and want to learn. The confidence of the young absolutely amazes me. What are you doing now, Gaia? Going home, Stuart. I've got to skin up. Got to get myself in the right frame of mind for the parents. I'm constantly marvelling at, at, at the amount of work that my cast are doing on this. They've all really stepped up. I don't know whether it's because it's J.K. Rowling. There's something that's really fired their imaginations off with these characters, uh, and uh, they've sort of fallen in love with them individually, and it really shows, I think, in their performances. Mm -hmm.